This video is sponsored by Squarespace. On one hand, we had the latest Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and on the other hand, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Both incredible pieces of tech, right? But if you've been considering a switch from Apple to Android, is this a good time to do that? In this video, I'll cover the reasons why I believe that a switch will be good for some people and why in some cases, it's probably better to wait. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. And no, this is not your typical I'm switching sort of video, by the way, but more of a realistic view of what's making me put the iPhone to one side and frankly, enjoy what the S23 Ultra has to offer. And as someone who's been using Android devices and Apple devices together for a long time, I struggle with this on a daily basis. But I do find that there are ways of easily transitioning from Apple to Android if you want to, or even having them both coexist. So hopefully this video can help you as well. When it comes to the design, both these devices only had a minor change this year, to the point that I had to call them both out for being too samey. But deep down as a customer, you always think that what they haven't delivered in design, maybe they'll come up with the goods, right, in other areas. Well, Samsung absolutely did that. And look, straight off the bat, I don't be around the bush in this channel. I've been quite vocal about this and I really think the iPhone 14 Pro Max for me was overall a disappointment. And it kind of annoyed me a little bit that not many people call them out for it. You Are know? you still salty that they haven't sent you any free products or invited you to Cupertino? Well, that kind of explains it, right? Where there are so many positive reviews on the iPhone. I'm not saying the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a bad phone. And please do take my view with a massive pinch of salt because I'm really not a typical customer. Most customers won't be upgrading every year, I know that, and the iPhones do last a long time to be fair. So if you're coming from an iPhone that's older than three, four years, then the 14 Pro Max is actually an awesome upgrade and I actually envy you. Or maybe this is your first iPhone, you're actually jumping the other way, right, from Android to iPhone, and if that's you, again, I'd be really excited for it. Because when you look at it in isolation, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, if you ignore everything else, is an incredible device. But when, like me, you realize that the previous iPhone, the 13 Pro Max, was an excellent phone already, you start to think, hang on, the 14 Pro Max doesn't really have much to show. And actually, I said this in my review, if you can find a decent deal for the 13 Pro Max, that's actually a better value for money when it comes to the iPhone. Conversely, when I look at the S23 Ultra, this story is very different. And I think it comes down to where the baseline was, right? The iPhone had an excellent baseline in the 13 Pro Max and kind of went downhill from there. The S23 Ultra had the S22 Ultra to start with, which in my opinion was not a very good phone. You know, I've had the Exynos version here, so bear that in mind too, but I just never enjoyed using it. As a creative, I do use my phone for videos a lot. So the iPhone has been very much present in my day to day because of that. And because the S23 Ultra has improved so much on video, it makes it an absolute beast now. Ergonomically as well, the S23 Ultra is just much better to hold. As I said in my previous video, it feels much more refined. Despite the design changes being so small, I really appreciate how comfy it is to use now despite it being such a big phone. Recently, I've been alternating between the Fold 4 and the Pixel 7 Pro as well for media consumption and, you know, relaxing in the evenings as well. The iPhone, even before I got the S23 Ultra, had already been demoted to my 9 to 5 phone, you know, that I use for work emails and sync it with my Apple Watch. And that's because it was just too heavy and too awkward to use in the evenings. Just for basic entertainment things like gaming, browsing Twitter and Instagram, you know, and doing something that I really enjoy, which is replying to your lovely comments in the evenings, I really love using speech to text for that. And let's just say that Siri, doesn't really understand me. I know I have a dodgy accent as well, but Google Assistant just gets me, you know? Bixby isn't that great either, but I feel like using Google services and the Gboard for typing on the S23 Ultra is a much better combo, a much smoother experience. I do really enjoy the look of the iPhone, you know, it's a beautiful device when you, when you look at it, but the S23 Ultra just feels much better to use now. I'll cover some of the quality of life upgrades that we've had on both devices, to be fair, and the point about Android apps versus iOS apps, I've got something to say about that as well. But let's talk about performance now, because I know this is quite an important aspect for you. Actually, before we talk about performance, I really can't help myself. I have to vent. I just watched a video earlier today that, that really got my blood going a little bit, you know? This here is probably one of the best smartphones ever released. And some of the long-standing, huge YouTube channels out there decided to actually ignore this and kind of just cover it, you know, superficially. And I'm actually talking a lot about Apple right now. Come on, guys, you know, you've clearly made enough money from Apple already and just let it rest a little bit 
and recognize of something they've done here. I really respect their content and I actually enjoy a lot of their videos, but I'm not hating on them. It just makes my blood boil a little bit because not someone who makes tech videos as well, but as a consumer myself, it's just too disingenuous for me, you know? <sighs> All right, okay, I feel better now. Going back to performance, and I'm sorry if you're expecting to see benchmarks, that's not what I do here. If I ever use benchmark data, and I have done, it will be to pinpoint something quite specific. I just think it's more useful to show you what these devices can do and give you an idea of how I use them. So ignoring iOS 16 for the moment, which has been pretty patchy for me, one thing that I do appreciate is how memory and performance in general is managed on the iPhone. I'm talking it will be weeks and weeks before I realize that I haven't rebooted the iPhone or closed any of the apps, which is insane. I've had bugs and crashes, but that's an issue for another video. It's early days on the S23 Ultra, but it's looking very, very solid on that performance front as well. When it comes to running things that really push the processing power, I just think the S23 Ultra is able to do a lot more. But not because of the new Snapdragon 8 chip that they've got here, which does feel amazing coming from an Exynos user here, but simply because with Android, I feel like you can multitask better. Well, you can multitask, period. And you can run things like Samsung DeX, which is just amazing, and still use the display whilst that's running for something else, which is just, yeah, incredible. That truly is a superpower when you're trying to get work done. And I wish more people would talk about this because yeah, it's just out of this world. Here we've got the S Pen as well. So overall, I think the S23 Ultra is a more complete device in terms of what you can do. And there are many pointless tests that I could run here, but there is one thing that has fried my iPhone. I think it was the 12 Pro Max before, which was a game called Genshin Impact. So I always like to go back to that game on full settings for over an hour and see what happens. And as you can see here, no problem there either. Both phones were able to do this without any drop frames or display dimming or anything like that, which I did experience on the 12 Pro Max. Sure, both phones got really, really warm after about 40 minutes of playing that game, but I don't know, is this too hot? The iPhone, as you can see here, went up to 110 Fahrenheit, which is about 40 Celsius, and not too dissimilar on the S23 Ultra. By the way, this was done without a case on, so I'd assume that if you've got a case on while you're running this game, you'll get even warmer, depending on the case, of course. Now, when we talk about the display, I did find something that really surprised me here on the S23 Ultra. But before I get into that, both of these phones have an adaptive display, as you know, so they're meant to adapt the refresh rate of the screen depending on the type of content. As I said, you probably knew this already. On the iPhone, as expected, there aren't that many settings to play with, and there isn't an easy way to check whether we are getting 120 Hz refresh rate and when we're not. Which brings me to what surprised me about the S23 Ultra. On Android, you can turn on developer mode and see what the refresh rate actually is, which is really cool for testing purposes. With the S21 Ultra and the S22 Ultra previously, and the Pixels too for that matter, I do remember seeing these vary between 60 and 120, sometimes it goes down to 30 as well. What I noticed on the S23 Ultra though, is that they're dropping the refresh rate to 24 Hz, but you can see there on the top left of the screen, is showing 24. If I touch the screen or do something, it goes up to 120, which you can expect, but it goes back to 24 when you're not using it, which does make a lot of sense when you're watching content that was recorded at 24 frames per second. But when it's idle, this is something new that I hadn't noticed on any Android device before. So it made me wonder if that is how they are achieving such good battery life now. Everyone is going on and on about how the S23 Ultra has an amazing battery life, but I haven't heard anyone say where this performance is coming from. As we all know, the display uses a lot of battery, but I can be guessing here, right? Let me know in the comments if you notice that too. I'm learning as well, so even better if you know the reason behind this. I do feel like using the displays outside is marginally better on the S23 Ultra, but listen, it's so close. To me, Samsung does have the edge here on contrast and in some scenes, I think you can see a little bit more detail in some of the darker areas. By the way, for this entire video, I've used the S23 Ultra set to Vivid and the resolution to WQHD+, because why not? I also prefer the colors on the Samsung a bit better. Using True Tone on the iPhone didn't make much of a difference, and if anything, it made the colors look a bit duller and less vibrant. Of course, the display itself on the S23 Ultra is a little larger and has less distraction too, but this AMOLED display just makes everything a tiny bit sharper for me. None of these are deal breakers for me. Not once since I got the iPhone did I feel like I was getting an inferior display. That just died. What can be a deal breaker is this Monkey Island. There was a lot of promise from Apple at launch and many fanboys out there will tell you or have you believed that the artwork or some fancy animations is amazing on this. Honestly, I just think it's a gimmick. Well, yes, but let's get rid of this and talk about the cameras.
Okay, this is a biggie. The iPhone has been a great all-round camera phone for many, many years. And when we talk about video specifically, the iPhone has been unbeatable for me. It still does awesome 4K videos. I can't really fault it for that. These days though, let's face it, it's hard to find a flagship phone that takes bad photos or makes bad videos. It actually makes me laugh when I see some of the comparisons online where there are so many variables at play that you know could make the photo look slightly different on one way or another. I'm showing you here a few photos that I took just as a reference more than anything. Like I said there are way too many things here between the two shots that you know there's camera shake involved, there's different lighting and different angles. Basically at this point I think it's a question of personal preference. Realistically if you want the best shot from a smartphone you would shoot it in RAW and edit it later in something like Lightroom. At the end of the day for most people these phones are way more than they will ever need from a camera perspective just for taking standard travel family photos and their pets but Samsung have done something amazing here the shots I've been able to take with this phone and the quality of video that's coming out of this whew, it, it really took me by surprise you know I was way too busy moaning about the design you know I did say it looked boring and I completely neglected the camera aspect because every year has been the same story but this time I can't stop being amazed at how good this is now makes me a bit annoyed actually that there are a lot of channels out there kind of downplaying this. You know, if this was Apple, people would be going mad. You know, on YouTube, people would be going crazy. Apple have just destroyed every phone. You know, the camera is like, I've used iPhones since the first one and I have no problem saying this. What Samsung have done here is next level. I don't really have the skills to take amazing shots, but you point this thing at anything and it will deliver. I'll leave a link for you at the end of this AK video that I did and I'll also share the original files from both devices so you can have a proper look at these photos and videos yourself if you want to. I can finally say that I can use an Android device now for videos professionally. In some shots you can see here at 4K30 the iPhone is still super sharp you know not knocking it but the lens reflections are really quite distracting for me. I like to see that in shots it makes them more human and maybe we got used to them by now, right? But the reflections on the S23 Ultra are just a little bit more subtle. I don't really know what it is, but I really prefer it now. Not to mention astrophotography, you know, talking about not having the skills here, I've seen some amazing astrophotography shots online. So rather than trying to do this myself and fail, take a look at what my fellow creators were able to do here. I don't think you can do this on the iPhone without third party software and a lot of editing, but to be able to do this on a smartphone these days is just amazing, right? The stabilization on both phones now is fantastic and that's been the case on the iPhones anyway for a long time. I do love what Apple did here with action mode actually. I thought it was gonna be another gimmick from Apple, but it's probably the most underrated camera feature for me. The iPhone camera app has always been quite basic and quite boring. And I think action mode is a nice change, you know, making it a little bit more fun to use. Super steady on the S23 Ultra looks great too. I've only tested it a couple of times, so I haven't really been able to fully test it side by side yet. But don't worry, I'll definitely do that in my next one. The selfie camera, as you can see, is nothing to write home about, but here's a quick comparison for you to see. And this YouTube thing is really hard, you know, so if you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me show this video to more people out there. You might not think it, but it really helps the channel. It helps YouTube show this video to other people. And that's how the channel grows, and that's how I'll be able to make more videos for you. And after this video, take a look at the channel, and if you like my stuff, it'll be awesome if you subscribe. I'm here at least once a week with a new down-to-earth tech video for you. Did you notice how much the audio quality has improved on the S23 Ultra? When I was editing this in my last review, I honestly couldn't believe it. The microphone quality here is just insanely good now for vlogging and things like that. So if you were thinking about switching and you weren't sure about how good this is for vlogging, rest assured, this is superb now. These are phones at the end of the day, right? And something that I always find hilarious is how people like me on YouTube forget to test the call quality. How are you doing? Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. You're breaking up again. Oh man, this is awful. Is this better? Hello? Is this any better? Let me, call you, let me call you back. I'm not making this up. It, this happens all the time. Just before my birthday and I'm, I'm just uh, I was in bed. We're flying to Hungary at the end of March. Yeah, that'll be nice. Um, let me call you back on my other phone. I was like, wow, well, 10 months ago this was. And it was like 200,000 people watching. <laughs> Did you see that, Anna? No, I don't know which one it was, yeah. Uh, I don't know, I need to find it. Call me. So it's not there, really. <laughs> uh, Entertaining, yeah. yeah. Informative. <laughs> useful all right mate thank you and i'll no, see you no soon problem. so that was interesting right that was an 11 minute call and no hiccups on the s23 ultra 
Something else that I really care about is audio quality, not just in terms of the speakers itself, but also when it comes to recording audio. But first, I brought an old friend here to test the speaker quality with us. You may recognize him from previous videos. Hey man, can we use some music to test the speakers? Sure, we can do that. Let's try some talking audio first and then we'll go into music. And while we're here testing the mic and speakers for talking audio, let's talk about Squarespace. Remember what I said about sharing my music on my website? I really wanna test this out. Okay, how about this? I'll show you how easy it is to add music to your website and that way we test the speakers and we let people know about Squarespace. You're sponsoring today's video and I thought we could make this a little bit more fun, you know? All right, let's do it. And you told me before, right, that you wanted to create a new website and promote your business? Yes, I really wanna do this, but I have no experience in web design and I have no idea how to start. Well, let me show you how easy it is. Squarespace have these really cool templates to get you started. So it really doesn't matter what industry you're in, Squarespace will have a template for you. In other words, you know, starting from a blank page. That's so cool. And I can see that you added some really cool features to your website as well. And you can add member areas too. You must have done this before, right? Well, let me tell you a little secret. I have zero experience in web design. No way. That's right. And you mentioned music as well, right? Yeah, I really want to share my art and my music on my website. Let's say I want to create a new page on the website, like a blog post with some pictures and some audio. Check this out. It's so easy to do. A few clicks and I have an entire new page created with audio embedded. Oh, fantastic. That was really quick. So we can use this audio now to test the speakers? Exactly. And how do I sound, by the way, on the 14 Pro Max? Sounding really good, actually. I'm going to let the viewers decide, but you don't sound so bad on the S23 Ultra. And you know what else sounds great? Nah. Squarespace is making it super easy for anyone to start a website. Awesome. But how? Just go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to commit, go to squarespace.com forward slash Alex Geartech to get 10% of your purchase of a website or a new domain. And thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey, you stole my line. Okay, great. So let's hear what these bad boys sound like when listening to music. I know I uploaded this to my website, but I'll play this via Spotify. So you know it's coming from a more common app that everyone knows. And the settings are set exactly the same way on both phones. I don't know if you've been able to tell the difference here, but here's what I think. The iPhone in this test of just playing Spotify is noticeably better. The S23 Ultra does sound great as well, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max actually has a bit more punch, you know, a bit more bass. It's really impressive what Apple have done with the speakers here. You know, I was, I was expecting the S23 Ultra to be better, but honestly, it's not close either. You know, there's quite a gap between the two. And it's not just in music, but I noticed that when watching content as well. With the 14 Pro Max, depending on the content, you can actually notice the sound coming from different places giving you that sense of surround sound. Don't really know how to explain it, but that's the best way I can explain it. With the S23 Ultra, the audio is excellent, but it's not as clean. It does feel like it's all coming from one place. The iPhone, like I said, there's more of a surround aspect to it. When you pair the devices with earbuds or headphones, they sound exactly the same. Absolutely amazing. So if the speakers are something that you really care about, then the iPhone is much better. I couldn't find anything that made the iPhone sound inferior to the S23 Ultra, including gaming. But if the speakers are not that important to you, and you wear headphones a lot, for example, then either option will be just as good. Right, let's talk about battery for a bit. Like I said in my last video, I totally downplay the battery on this because both will last you all day and go beyond it. And that to me is more than what you can ask for when it comes to a flagship phone. If you're really constantly away from a charger, traveling a lot maybe, then the S23 Ultra has a big advantage here without doubt. I'm not gonna bother with those unrealistic tests of just draining the battery on them and seeing which one kind of dies first. But like I've done before, I'll take them both out for a full day, do some proper testing using the phone, you know, working on them, taking photos, taking videos to give you a more realistic view. But even then I'd still maintain that if it's giving you a full day's battery, then all you gotta do is plug it in overnight, right? It's not, it's not a big deal. The battery will kind of manage itself these days. You know, these devices got really quite smart now about how they manage that charging too. There's so much more to cover here, but without making this video like half an hour long, here's a quick fire of what I consider quality of life features in a bit of a fun way. My S23 Ultra has USB-C charging. So what? I've got this. What? I've got lightning. And fast charging too. Fast charging? What is that? Got an S Pen as well. I can use my fingers. I can use it as a computer with Samsung DeX. Customization, video wallpapers, even developer mode if I want to. Developer mode? Why? I've got Monkey Island. The iPhone has crash detection. Well, you... Emergency satellite? You are a car crash. Come on. Physical mute button? Really? And better apps? Whoa. Okay, that's, that's below the belt. Oh. Mr. Monkey Island. 
we're done here. All right, my expectations were really low for both phones, to be completely honest. But I appreciate that you may be coming from an older iPhone and I do have to temper my 100% bias towards the Samsung right now. But that's because Samsung have just been better. You know, they smashed it with the Fold 4 recently and possibly just released the best smartphone I've ever used. Look, if you've been looking for an opportunity to change sides from Apple to Android, I can say with confidence now that there's never been a better time. Speaking from experience, when you choose the Google Pixel, there are some compromises. The Fold 4, I appreciate, is not for everyone, but this, the S23 Ultra, is the ultimate iPhone replacement for me. Will the iPhone 15 change things here? Possibly, but it's gonna take a monumental effort from Apple, I think. If Apple just do what they've been doing in the last couple of years, I'm pretty sure they'll be left behind. I just think that as customers, this is actually a great time for a tech product, you know? We're really quite spoiled for choice now. Talking of which, check out these two beauties over here, or if you prefer this one here, and subscribe for more content like this. See you soon.